So we're back for uh, part two of the podcast with uh, Samantha of Ghost Hunters. You know, Samantha, thank you so much for your time. Like I said before, you know, it's middle of the week. You know, uh, we all have family. So uh, I really appreciated you taking the time to talk with me and talk with your fans also. <laughs> thank you for having me. And I realized with Twitter and everything that people, you know, you're very, um, you know, it, it, we can see it on the TV show, you know, uh, that you're a very sweet person, very caring person. And, uh, you know, you like... Dustin, you know, <laughs> you you have the same light than Dustin has, in my opinion. Oh, well, thank you. Thank you. I mean, it, it's, uh, I know you've been on the uh, podcast with my good friend Mark, Arvilla, and Lauren also, and oh, I really enjoyed. Great. And hopefully you'll be in Salem Con uh, in, next April. I don't know if it's going to fit with your schedule, but uh, it's going to be an, a great event. Well, I haven't gotten asked, um, but I mean, it, it, it would be great. I would love to go. I would sure be there. That would be awesome. You know, it's not too far from, uh, and it's such a beautiful city. You know, have you been to Salem a lot? I actually just went for the first time. I went uh, like a week before Halloween, um, which is, of course, you know, the busy time to, to go to Salem and see everything. Um, and I mean, it was great. It was fun. It was a little chilly, but I took my kids and they enjoyed it. So it was really for a good day. Yeah, that's cool. You know, it's a very beautiful place and you can feel the uh, the activity uh you know in some places I, i've had a chance to investigate a few places in salem but it's a very cool location but two places you guys have been investigating on the last season uh that was shown on tv because you're actually filming season 11 right now right uh, well we actually have already finished season 11 wow that's that, amazing that just finished um but i mean it just got picked up so uh it's i mean it's awesome it's full of amazing amazing locations and again i mean The evidence in season 10 was, was great, but season 11 is pretty pretty awesome, too. So, I mean, it's going to be fun, and I can't wait for them to tell us when it's airing so that we can tell everyone. But everybody keeps asking, and we don't have a day yet. We just found out yesterday that it's going to air. Wow. No, no, very happy, very happy about it, because 11 seasons, not a lot of shows do make it these days, you know, uh, to, sit, to, to so far, you know. Uh, yeah, it's been a blessing. I mean, it really is for, for Dad, for everyone. I mean, everyone's worked so hard. And, I mean, it's just, it obviously, I guess, shows because people still watch every week and, you know, are so excited every week. You know, because the reason why I think the success of Ghost Hunters have been um, steady over the years is the fact that you haven't changed. Even when it would have been tempting to, right, to, to sometimes, you know, go with the flow, you know, more equipment, uh, more uh, flashy intro or whatever, but you didn't. And people, I think, appreciate it. Kind of like Supernatural. I love this show. It, 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 it's, you know, it, there's nothing spectacular on the show, but it, it feels, it, it's just a feel-good feel, feel good show, you know? It, yeah. and I don't think it would fit, you know, to go Star Wars on Supernatural, you know? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> to me, it's... People always, people say, um, there is, you know, you, you, guys, you guys never catch evidence, and I why I don't watch the show anymore, but we can only catch what's there. <laughs> we can't. We're not going to go make something up and tell you this is what's in this building just so that you'll, you know, you'll watch next week's episode. It's just the luck of the draw. And we go to, you know, uh, places that uh, so many other teams have had experiences at and we're there for two nights and we're just not. Like, we're just not having anything. And that's just the way it is. It's just whatever was there didn't want to communicate. And, that's, you know, that's sad. If we missed that opportunity to talk to them. But, I mean, it's the way it is. And we're not going to go changing and, you know, going to, you know, a, these crazy locations with insane activity just to get something every week when we should be in homes and, and helping people and, you know, small businesses and helping them. And you're going to see a lot more of that season 11, a lot more, you know, small stuff and people who just genuinely need help. Exactly. And that's what I love about about you. That, that's kind of like what I do here. You know, a lot of private home investigations and on road trips when we do the Letchworth Villages or the Penners or Eastern State or Moundsville or uh, trans Allegheny, to me, it's like, uh, like a little gift, you know, where you can go and uh, try to interact the same way you would do in a private home. But you don't have the same, uh, you don't have people, you always, you know, I, I've been to locations actually Uh, that I'm not going to name because this is not what I do, but I, I've been on locations where after the investigation, if I didn't catch anything, people would give me my money back because they don't, and, and say, don't say you've been here on social media because they want to protect their place and they know we're not going to lie about what we caught. 
So there's some locations that want you, that they pressure you into finding evidence. And I'm sure, you know, over the years, uh, your dad and Grant, and now you, uh, you, you probably have that pressure. You know, you, you have to find evidence. And that, to me, is one of the big problems in the paranormal field, where people pressure you into doing it and sometimes telling you, you know, teams have been here before and they caught this and they caught that. And yeah. like they expect you, like it's, it's a competition. It's not. <laughs> I mean, yeah, there are definitely there are definitely locations that say, "Hey, well, you know, or you know, that's how you after, like after you you've shown them what you found, they say, well, this is what so and so caught, and and we like their evidence more.' Okay, that's that's great, and you're you know you're very that's fine. You can like their evidence more. This is what we caught, and you can add this to the evidence you have. Like we're not going to, you know, we can't have the same experiences that they have. It's just it's not going to happen that way. And, I mean, you know, sometimes it's sad that we didn't have the same experiences, but it's just the way it is. And now you can just take what we give you and you can add it to all of your, your claims that you want to. But, I mean, there have definitely been places that, you know, their claims seem a little odd and, you know, it, it nothing really adds up and they just want you to find something really haunted, but they don't have the claims that anything really haunted happens. So, I mean, those are things that we kind of say, hey, listen. There are homes that need our help, and there are local businesses that truthfully need our help. So we're going to pass on this one. And there's no better feeling than leaving a home where the owners of the house hug you, and uh, there's you get emotional. After, like this weekend, we're very emotional, and the owner of the house was crying with us, and everybody was crying on the team. And, uh, you know, there's nothing better than saying, yeah, I want to give you money. And I said, no, we do it for free. We don't accept money. And then giving us, you know, he's a hunter. So he, he's hunting. I don't know what kind of bird, but he gave us, you know, like those big sausage. And uh, he said, I want you guys to bring it back home. And I was like in my car driving back home. And I had <laughs> this package of sausage. I'm like, my goodness, you know, you establish a link that is, it's impossible to describe, right? It's a- absolutely impossible to describe the relationship you, you have with people after you've done those kind of investigations. Yeah, I mean, it's great. It's, I actually, um, I had worked on a, uh, a private investigation, um, not with the show, just with the top phone team. And, um, you know, I just went out and we did the investigation of a family that needed help. And, like, the next week I walked into the hair salon and actually one of the clients was in the hair salon. And, I mean, that's just, that's what I like. I like to know I can sit there and talk to her and be like, oh, you know, what has happened? And, like, what has happened since we've been there? And just talk about other things. I mean, just just make her an acquaintance and, and just, you know, somebody to, to talk to. And she can vent about things to worry her and tell me if she needs to tap home team back. I mean, that's, I like having those connections with people. I like it. It's, I don't know, I appreciate it so much more than anything else. That, yeah, to me, that's, I think, the biggest gift you can have because that's something you, we have to realize is that sometimes, you know, to, to them, we're strangers and they open their doors to strangers, you know, to sit on their beds, to walk in their, in their closet or whatever in their basement. And it takes a lot of guts for, for those people to trust us to do it in a respectful manner. It's, uh, it's, I'm not even sure I would do that, you know, if I, it was, if I was not in the paranormal field, you know. I mean, it's definitely, they put a lot of trust in you. They put a lot, and they put a lot of trust in you to find, I mean, if it's something that they're, they're afraid of, to, you know, talk to it and, and tell it what they want to tell it. You know what I mean? Like, they, they give you that trust to, to say, hey, you know, back off. They, they don't want you, you know, being so close and so in their face. Or, I mean, they give you that, that ability to do that. And, I mean, if you had the ulterior motives, I mean, you could put them in a, a very bad situation. But... I mean, it's it's based on trust and respect. Everything about the paranormal field is. Exact, exact, and uh, and the paranormal field is built also on uh, on the fact that we're dealing with the unknown. You know, even if we we think we're, de- I was listening to uh, Amy on Talk to Jericho podcast last week, and I was like, wow, we, you know, maybe in 20 years from now, uh, quantum physics will be able to explain what we're dealing with. It could be time travel, it could be so many things. But as we know, you know, that's one more reason to be very careful of how we interact with those spirits or ghosts or whatever we want to call them but you know they're like people like us you yeah. know so it's I, mean, I definitely make sure i always interact with the way that i mean if i pass on and i'm still here for whatever reason i mean we don't know how it works but i i interact the way i'd want somebody to interact with me and i ask the questions that i would want someone to ask me and i you know and that's that's what i do like that's how i approach it And, but I know you had some, I think you had some really good questions about what, for Adam? I know that that's something you were interested in. Yeah. 
Fort Adams, you know, in, uh, in, in Newport, Rhode Island, a beautiful fort, the biggest fort actually uh, in the United States and uh, with some creepy stuff happening, you know, and I've investigated a few times and uh, I, I was anxious because I, I've seen part of the show. I was watching it on, uh, I missed that one. So I was watching it on, uh, on YouTube this afternoon before we, we talked and uh, I was in the part where Dustin was in, in the uh, underground tunnels with uh, KJ And uh, tell me more about your experiences that you had, you know, at the fort. I had actually, uh, surprisingly, because I'm from Rhode Island, um, that was one place I had never been. And, I mean, I've gone to, to Newport um, many, many times, but it was just one of the, those places I had never seen. And it is, it is overwhelming. I mean, it really is. It's so big, and you can get lost. You can just, I mean, you go in, in one side of it, and you're, you're so far away from everyone, and nobody can hear you. And, I mean, it's, it's an amazing, amazing place. It's beautiful, and I recommend anybody going there, even if it's not for, you know, they, they do some, like, you know, haunted houses, and I mean, around Halloween time, and they do tours and things like that. But even just go drive up and walk inside. I mean, it's, it's overwhelming. But, um, I mean, the experiences were, were insane. I mean, they were just, they were, there were voices, and there were knocks. And, I mean, there, there were Dad and I that, that most people saw sitting And we were talking, and, I mean, every time I asked something to happen, it happened. And it's just whatever was there is, was very intelligent and was watching. And, I mean, it, it's great. It wasn't, there was nothing threatening. There was nothing, I mean, you weren't getting watched in a threatening manner. I know there's some grisly tales with the fort. But whatever was there just seemed really, you know, genuinely just wanted to talk and just wanted to hang out and liked having visitors and, I mean, it was a great feeling, and we walked away from that case with some really good evidence. Wow, that's awesome. You know, that's where I cut my weirdest evidence ever because I was doing an EVP session and uh, I turned to one of my teammates and uh, one of our, uh, something goes wrong is Houston, we have a problem. So uh, I said, Houston, we have a problem because I, I think one of the cameras fell or whatever. And when I reviewed my, uh, my, my audio recorder, when I said, Houston, we have a problem, I caught... Who's Houston? <laughs> I was like, what? That's really, that's really cool. <laughs> that was awesome. And I was like, wow, and clear as day, you know, who's Houston? Like, <laughs> yeah, that's the thing. I think sometimes, and that's what, they're people, and that's why I always say they're people. And, you know, sometimes it, it might take a lot of energy for them to do what, say what they want to say and do what they want to do. But it's like sometimes they say things on the recorder and, And they're just, they're just funny responses. Sometimes you say, hey, you, you didn't tell me your name, but, you know, you copied me. <laughs> like, it's, I love it. I love it. There's, you're talking with people that while you can't see them, they have some really cool stories most of the time, and they're more than willing to talk to you. Exactly. And we have uh, Mark and Lauren, you know, in the chat room saying hi to, uh, say, hi, Dom, hi, uh, Samantha. <laughs> hi. <laughs> so Salem come to you know coming up you know uh, in, in in April you know I would love to uh, you know it just, w would be awesome you know to have uh, you there you know uh, even if it's during the, the day on Saturday you know I, I would love you know, so much beautiful cemeteries uh, and the Auton Hotel where the, the convention is held is a beautiful haunted location also so uh, it's uh, it's amazing you know so many people I think Dustin will be there again this year uh, and uh, a lot of great people uh, Brian Kano will be there too so it's uh, it's always fun you know to connect with uh, yeah it is... I mean I heard good things last year good things from Dustin actually and I mean yeah if I get an invite I'll totally be there That would be amazing. And uh, <laughs> says, oh, geez. Yeah, that would be great, you know, to, to have you there. And uh, I, another place that Mark is listening, and, and Lauren, they were there last, last week, and I, I was not able to go this time around. But I've been to the Holland Mansion, I would say, four or five times already. And to me, a lot of people ask me, what was the most haunted place you've ever been in? And by a mile, I would say Bobby Mackey and the Holland Mansion. And uh, for two different reasons, Bobby Mackey, nothing negative there. But the Hunter mentioned, you know, when you go upstairs or in the temple, it feels not that aggressive. But in the basement, to me, <laughs> so, I experienced the craziest stuff I have ever experienced. Mark could could uh, could tell you, you know, one time I got very aggressive in the basement. I felt bad energy surrounding me. And uh, tell me more about your uh, investigation at the Hunter. First, was it the first time you were there? That was that was my first time there, and I mean, I have course heard the stories from from everyone you know that, that describes the, the Houghton Mansion and I mean they're they're always the same this place is it's energy filled and you can feel it when you walk in and 
that is very much correct. I mean, you walk in and you can feel it. And I mean, it's it's strange. It's people sometimes say, you know, how do you know there's something in the room to talk to? I mean, you can feel it. It's like when somebody walks in a room behind you. You you just know somebody's there. And I mean, that's all that mansion feels like. I mean, you walk in and it's as if all eyes are immediately on you, and they whatever is there wants to know your story. And they want to know why you're there. <laughs> and they want, you know, they're ready to start talking. And, I mean, it's it's a cool place. It's definitely heavy in energy. Um, we didn't have anything, you know, negative, talk to us or anything like that. Um, but, I mean, it definitely left us scratching our heads a little bit. I know we had some really cool evidence from that one. Well, um, did, did you go in the basement uh, during the investigation? I spent I spent a lot of time in that basement. Actually, we um we tend to bring a lot of toys and stuff with us if we know that we're going on a a case where there may be children. And I know that the haunted mansion. Correct me if I'm wrong, but there's a little girl that supposedly hangs out in the basement. That's yeah, right. exactly. I've been on so many locations. Sometimes it's hard to remember, but I I do know that there was a little girl involved there. At some you know nobody really understands why. Exactly I, because. I, I yep. spent plenty of time there. Because the house is old, but I think it was built on top of another house that it was older, yeah. and the basement was part of the old house, so we don't know much about that old, uh, old house. But uh, when I got aggressive, I got aggressive, and I started... I, I just felt like, uh, you know, something bad happened to uh, to kids, you know, in that basement, to, or to the little girl, or to... I, I don't know, I just felt... The energy of that spirit, and uh, that's something that never happened to me before, and probably once after twice, you know, during six or seven years of doing it, like almost every week. So uh, it's not something that happens very often. But when I went back, the investigation after it happened, I went back all alone in the basement, and again I felt for the first time, you know, I'm not afraid to say it, I was scared out of my wits. I felt attacked. Yeah. I felt it's as if something was. It was a building that made me sad. I yep. mean, that, that's something that I'm I'm comfortable saying is it's a place that, I mean, I spend time in the basement and we, we always do debunk and it's something that I very much like to start my investigation off with. They're just, you know, solid debunk. Let's get the stuff out of the way that we can we can answer. So, I mean, we, there were, I know people, there were claims of some, you know, sounds in the basement and Dave would go outside and he'd make sounds, see if I could hear him and things like that. So I spent a lot of time in the basement, you know, just alone, just sitting there with my camera and toys I brought in, because when, I mean, a child's involved, I always try to approach it, you know, as, as the mom that I am, and, you know, offer to play and offer to talk and, and offer to be that, you know, that, you know, that comfort zone, you know, momentarily, and, um, but it was definitely, there's a sad feeling there, yeah. and, you know, I know that there were, I believe we, we did have a, a young girl found a GDP response at one point, but, I mean, it's, It's sad, and I don't know what makes it sad because nobody, I don't think anybody has been given answers as to why that little girl's there and what happened to her, but it's definitely a building that has a heavy, sad feeling. Oh, yeah, definitely. In the temple, totally different energy. Uh, in Mary's it room. Is. It's like turning a light switch. It's very different up there. It, it is. Uh, in Mary's room, you know, we got a dark shadow when I was about to go to sleep and it kept coming back at me and I tried to debunk it every way, shape or form and I just couldn't make any sense of it. There were two of us in a room and we all saw it like a dark shadow moving in and out of the room, you know, from the window. So that was, uh, you know, active. You know, I, I could probably make a documentary <laughs> from all the things that we caught over the years. Like the I would definitely, I mean, I'd go back. I'd go back in a heartbeat even though it's so, it's an overwhelming It's dense. It, it is the air and the energy is dense in that building. It really is. And um, I would, but I would totally go back and I would try to get more answers if, if I was given the opportunity. Yeah, it was. You know, Samantha, there's something you know I'd like to ask you a question. That what is the best advice that anybody in the paranormal field ever gave you in all your years of doing that? Ooh, the best advice. Um, I'd have to say, I mean, one of two things, I guess. I mean, don't let your don't let the claims guide your investigation. Don't. I mean, because claims and stories change a little bit. You know, as, as they pass on and as time has gone by, you know, what what was actually experienced may change. So don't always look for that same exact thing to happen. I mean, it's probably not going to. So I mean, just just wait and just have your own experiences and you know, take the the history and the knowledge of the location. You know, to keep that in the back of your head, but, but be open to anything. And, I mean, stop to listen. Like, listen. Don't, 
I, I hate when people say that they watch the show and they say, you guys never stop talking, you're not listening. We do so much listening, and it's so, so important. They like, don't, I mean, I've seen teams, you know, sitting there on, on their cell phones and playing while they're the, sitting there and being quiet and listening. You're not paying attention. You're not. And whatever is sitting there watching you and wanting to talk to you, they know that you're not paying attention. So why, why are they going to talk? So, I mean, those are just some, some very important things to take into consideration. That's so true. You know, I always, you know, I ask, uh, tell the spirits when I investigate, you know, that I'd rather hear the story of the house from you than from the word of mouth or Google yeah. or whatever, you know. So now's your chance to tell us the true story, what truly happened. That's why we're here, you know. We're not here to, uh, you know, to see a dark shadow. We're not here, you know, to uh, to go like, oh, my goodness, this is going to go viral. This video will catch on fire on, on Facebook. No, we're here to help. We're here to help. If we catch something, great. But if we don't, at least, you know, if we can communicate with you and help you, you know, that's that, that makes it worth the ride. That makes it worth all the driving and all the uh, the money that we spend doing this, <laughs> you know? Some, sometimes not experiencing anything is exactly what, what these homeowners want. You know what I mean? Yep. It's not always catching something and giving them, you know, oh, well, they say their name is this, so this is why they're here. Sometimes they don't want those things, and it's, it's better when we don't touch anything. You know what I mean? Like, if, uh, when we told something, hey, back off a little bit. I mean, that's, that's more comforting and helpful to them than anything else. That's so, that's so true because, you know, and, and a place where I really get uncomfortable, and I'm sure it's the same thing with you, is when we do private homes. And uh, I always ask the owners if activity is in their uh, kids' room and always make sure that if, uh, like th this weekend, you know, there was a little uh, little boy – uh, 18 months. So we didn't go near the room. We didn't want to make anything worse in the room. And he said, no, I don't think it, nothing ever happened in the room. Perfect. So we're not going to do anything. We're not uh -huh. even opening the door, you know. Uh, that to me is something that most teams don't do. Sometimes, you know, they'll be very intrigued to try to see if there's something there, you know. And I think that you always have to be aware that you get to leave, after the one night or two night investigation, but the people will stay there and they'll keep living there. So always. Yeah, that's very important. Very, very important. I mean, that's, that's what I mean. These teams go in and they, you know, they provoke and they try to get things to happen and they, and they turn this into a hostile situation. And it's like, I, I understand you're trying to say, you know, move, leave. Nobody wants you here. But if you're not doing that appropriately and you're not handling that respectfully, it's going to stay, and you're going to leave. And these people are going to come home with something that now knows it's not wanted. And now, know, you know what I mean? It's just, it's, it all boils down to respect. You know, respect for homeowners, respect for locations, respect for these spirits, respect for everybody involved. Yeah, exactly, exactly. And respect, you know, for uh, also for... On your case, uh, you're on a, on a TV show, so respect for the viewers also, because oh, yeah, the people course. look at and they learn from you, you know. Now there's kids growing up that are growing up watching you, while, you know, younger kids, you know, they grew up watching Steve. You know, I don't want to make Steve or uh, Tango feel old, but <laughs> I mean, you know, <laughs> and they're looking up to you and... To them, you know, that's what paranormal investigating is all about. And some of the TV shows, you know, where people are more aggressive or whatever, people will look up to them and they go on locations. I have been on uh, investigations where we had to team up with another team that was very aggressive. And after 15 minutes, I said, there's two things that can happen here. You can either come down Or I will make you come down. <laughs> I was, and I was pissed. You know, I was like, no, no, you're not on my watch. You know, you're gonna come down, or you're gonna get the heck out of here. Because to me, that's a no, no. You know, you can't be yeah. out there screaming or, you know, recreating something terrible. Like the, the the worst thing that I ever saw during an investigation was a guy got shot in the head in the house, and uh, somebody brought a real gun, and uh, he kept, you know, firing the gun. You know, just to see in the same spot the guy was in. I was like, oh, my God. Whew. Sometimes I wonder how these people act in their own homes. Yeah. <laughs> I can't imagine. I mean, the things they do in other people. Oh, my goodness. That's incredible. Be be because you, 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 people will come back. And uh, it was a private home investigation, you know. And I was totally... Uh, 
you know, I, I, first of all, I didn't expect it. It was in my, the beginning. So I, back then I didn't have the balls to say anything, <laughs> but you know, I just came back home and I was like, oh my goodness, you know, this is not the way I'm going to do this. This is not the way I'm going to be. And you can learn from the good people, but you can also learn from those people too. You know, how not to be a paranormal investigator. <laughs> Sadly, you know, you can learn from both both ends yeah, of the you spectrum. Can, you can. So, Samantha, you know, uh, one more thing before you go. You know, uh, I know season 11 now is going to come up uh, soon. And, uh, you know, you're busy uh, investigating and uh, doing, you know, are you going to Paramol uh, events soon? Uh, you know, uh, yeah, coming months? Yeah, I have months? a few coming up in 2016. I have, um, I have one in Pennsylvania. Okay. And I have one in Ohio. I'm in Mansfield, Ohio. So, I mean, if, um, I know most people know the event website that we go through, Ideal Event Management. And um, I mean, that's where you can find anything on all of us. You can see where Steve's going to be, where Dave's going to be. And um, I'm actually doing both of those events with them. So I'm really, really excited. I think Dustin might be along for those, too. So, I mean, it's awesome. We have great stuff coming up. And so many people say they want to come out and investigate with us and see what it's like. And that's exactly what these are. So, I mean, it's, it's going to be loads of fun. That, that's awesome. And I just want you to uh, also to thank your, your dad, you know, for being a pioneer in the paranormal field. Uh, for, you know, for... You know, for guiding us, you know, paranormal investigators, there's so many of us. I would say there's millions <laughs> of investigators, you know, who were influenced uh, by watching Ghost Hunters, you know, the last 10 years. You know, you see a lot of teams come and go. But, you know, if you look up at the numbers of teams, that's amazing. You know, how many teams are coming up now today? Uh, just in Pennsylvania, I think there's 20 some, 20, 22 or 23,000 teams. Uh, it, it's Totally amazing, you know, uh, how many people are in the paranormal field right now. And a lot of them, you know, you know, they learn from watching shows like like, like Ghost Hunters and, uh, you know, G Ghost Adventures and those shows. And uh, it's amazing. Just want to say thanks to uh, to your dad for being a pioneer. And uh, you're coming up. You're a very gr good investigator. I really love your style. Uh, the respect that you show to the spirit and the way you investigate. I think you uh, are, you are an amazing investigator. Well, thank you. Thank you so much. And I really, I mean, I really hope the fans, you know, enjoy and appreciate the way I, I approach things because I've worked very hard to to do that on my own and to not just be doing this because this is, you know, what my dad did, but very much approach it in my own way, but still with, you know, the, the morals that I've been taught and, and the important things that have been passed down to me by everybody, by Steve, by dad, by, I mean, even Dave has had great influence on the way I approach things. So, I mean, I really hope that everybody enjoys watching every week, and I can't wait for season 11 to air. Me too, me too, and I uh, can't wait to watch season finale uh, this Friday, tomorrow here in Canada, and, uh, uh -huh. you know, uh, very happy, you know, uh, you took the time to talk to me today, I really enjoyed talking to you, like I said before, it seems to me like we've known each other for a long time, so... <laughs> Well, thank you. And I'm sure we'll talk again and let me know how you enjoy the episode after you watch it. Oh, I will. I will. Thank you so much, Sam. And uh, looking forward to talk to you again and maybe meet you uh, in an upcoming investigation or in Salem next year. Sounds great. We will talk soon. Thank you. All right. Thank you so much. Bye. Bye. All right, everybody. So thank you so much for tuning in tonight for the podcast. You know, uh, amazing. You know, as you can see, you know, uh, Samantha is not only great investigator she's also a great person and uh if you don't follow her you know she's on facebook at oz uh underscore uh, samantha uh she's a tremendous uh paranormal uh investigator and historian and uh, a great addition to the uh the show ghost hunters you know she brought a lot of energy and uh to the show and dustin being back also in kj and uh, i think with steve tango and and, and jason you know you have a big uh, a very good mix of investigators and uh, that's very important on any TV show but mostly on a paranormal investigate paranormal team you know because you need different kind of personalities to mesh together and, and sometimes you know you can mix the team it can go all in the six of us or we can split teams in two or teams of three and uh, it's, it's important you know to, to trust your teammates to know your teammates trust you it's all a matter of trust, you know, and believing in yourself and believing in your teammates and believing in the fact that we're out there helping 
uh, the spirits and helping the people at the same time. So uh, thanks again for tuning in. And there's more podcasts coming up. I, I want to do a podcast in a few weeks with Mark, uh, if he's available to talk about Salem Con coming up. It's in April, so it's coming up pretty soon. Uh, there's a lot of stuff coming up next year. We're working on a lot of projects, me, Steve, and MJ. My own team here, Quebec on the Ground, we're also working on a lot of projects. So there's a lot of stuff coming up. Too much stuff for one podcast, but uh, I'll keep you guys posted. And uh, thank you for tuning in again. And uh, we'll probably next week, another podcast. Thank you so much. Have a great night.